Hello friends, I'm Manila Kohli. I teach at Shamlal College, University of Delhi. In the last few modules, we have discussed the Renaissance age and the life and times of Shakespeare. From this module onwards, we will be looking at some of the well-known plays of Shakespeare, beginning with The Merchant of Venice. We intend to approach this play through an enactment of the famous trial scene. What is important about this approach of ours is that it intends to foreground a fact that seems obvious but is often missed. The fact that a play is more than a text, that it is primarily meant to be performed and that there are facets of it that come alive only during a performance. On stage, words become just one way of communicating as meaning is also conveyed through actors' expressions and gestures, costumes, stage setting, etc. Many of these elements are skillfully put to use in this enactment of the trial scene from the Merchant of Venice by the students of Jesus and Mary College, University of Delhi. This performance has been divided into four modules I hope you'll enjoy watching the performance of the trial scene. Thank you. What is that on you here? Make room and let him stand before our face. Shylock, the world thinks, and I think so too, that thou but leadest this fashion of thy malice to the last hour of act, and then tis thought thou show thy mercy at the most, most strange, that is thy strange apparent cruelty. Glancing an eye of pity on his losses that have of late so huddled on his back, we all expect a gentle answer, Jew. I've possessed your grace of what I purpose, and by a holy Sabbath have I sworn to have the due and forfeit of my bond. If you deny it, let the danger light upon your charter and your city's freedom. You lost me, why I rather choose to have a weight of carrying flesh than to receive 3,000 ducats. I'll not answer that, but say it's my humor. Is it answered? So can I give no reason, nor will I not? More than a large hate and a sudden loathing, I bear Antonio that I follow thus, a losing suit against him. Are you answered? This is no answer, thou unfeeling man, to excuse the parent of thy cruelty. I'm not going to please thee with my answers. I pray you, think you question with the Jew? You may as well use question with the wolf. Why hath made thee you bleed for the lamb? I do beseech you, make no more offers. Use no farther means. But with all brief and plain conveniency, let me have judgment and do his will. For thy three thousand ducats, here is six. If every ducat in six thousand ducats were in six parts and every part a ducat, I would not draw them. I would have my bond. How shall thy hope for mercy rendering none? What judgment shall I dread doing no wrong? You have among you many a purchased slaves, which like your asses and your dogs and your mutes, you use in abject and in slavish parts because you bought them. Shall I say to you, let them be free, marry them to your heirs, whilst with they and their burdens, let their beds be made as soft as yours, and their pallets be seasoned with such viands. You will answer, the slaves are ours. So do I answer you, the pound of flesh which I demand of him is dearly bought. It is mine and I will have it. If you deny me, fire upon your law. There is no force in the decrees of Venice. I stand here for judgment. 
Answer, shall I have it? No. Never! Upon my power I may dismiss this court, unless Bilario, a learned doctor whom I have sent for to determine this, come here today. Came you from Padua, from Bilario? From both, my lord. Bilario greets your grace. Why dost thou wed thy knight so earnestly? To cut the forfeiture from the bankrupt there. Not on thy soul, on thy soul, hearts too. Thou makest a knife king. Can no cross pierce thee? No, none that thou wit hast enough to make. No, friend, it has wit enough to make. You have to it. No, none that thou hast wit enough to make. Oh, be thou damned inexorable dog, and for thy life, let justice be accused. Till thou canst rend the seal from off my bond, thou but offended thy lungs to speak so loud. Repair thy with good you, or it may fall to callous ruin. I stand here for my law. This letter from the law your daughter command, a young and learned doctor to our court. Where is he? He attended here hard by, to know your answer. Whether you'll admit him? With all my heart, go give him courteous conduct to the court. And here, I take it, is the doctor come. Came you from old Bilario? I did, my lord. You are welcome. Take your place. Which is the merchant chair? And which the Jew? Antonio and old Shylock. Both stand forth. Is your name Shylock? Shylock is my name. Of a strange nature in the suit you follow, yet in such rule that the Venetian law cannot impugn you as you do proceed. You stand within his danger, do you not? I. So he says. Do you confess the bond? I do. Then must the Jew be merciful. On what compulsion must I tell me that? The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. Tis twice blessed, it blesseth him that gives, and him that takes. Tis mightiest in the mightiest. It becomes the throned monarch better than his crown. His scepter shows the force of temporal power, the attribute to awe and majesty, wherein doth sit the dread and fear of kings. But mercy is above the scepter this way. It is enthroned in the hearts of kings. It is an attribute to God himself. An earthly power doth then show like its gods, when mercy seasons justice. Therefore, Jew, though justice be thy plea, consider this, that in the cause of justice none of us should see salvation. We do pray for mercy, and that same prayer doth teach us all to render the deeds of mercy. I have spoke thus much to mitigate the justice of thy plea, which if thou follow this strict court of Venice must needs give sentence against the merchant there. My deeds upon my head, I crave the law, the penalty and forfeit of my bond. Is he not able to discharge the money? Yes. Here, I tender it for him in the court. Yet, yet twice the sum. If that will not suffice, I will be bound to pay ten times over. And I beseech you, rest once the law to your authority. To do a great right, do a little wrong, and curb this cruel devil of his will. It must not be. There is no power in Venice can alter a decree, establish it. It will be recorded for a precedent, and many an error by the same example will rush into the state. It cannot be. A Daniel come to judgment! Yea, a Daniel! Who winds the unjudge? How do I honor thee? Here! Here it is, most reverend daughter, here it is. Child, best tie thy money off of thee. An oath, an oath. I have an oath in heaven. Shall I let perjury upon my soul? No. Not for Venice. Why? This bond is forfeit, and lawfully by this the Jew may take a pound of flesh to be by him the dog near his the merchant's heart. Be merciful. Take try thy money. Bid me tear the bond when it is paid according to the tenor. I charge you by the law, whereof you are a well-deserving pillar. Proceed to judgment. 
But my soul, I swear, there is no power in the tongue of man to alter me. I stand here by my bond. Most heartily, I do beseech the God to give judgment. Why then, as it is, you must prepare your bosom for his knife. I is pressed. So says the bond. Job it not, noble shush. Nearest his heart. Those are the very words. It is so. Are there balance here to lay the flesh? I, I have them ready. Have I some servant, Shylock, on your charge to stop his wounds, lest he do bleed to death? Is it so nominated in the bond? It is not so expressed, but what of that? Twere good you do so much for charity. I cannot find it. Tis not in the bond. You, merchant, have you anything to say? But little. I am armed and well prepared. Give me your hand, Bassanio. Fare you well. Grieve not that I am fallen to this for you. Commend me to thy honourable wife. Tell of the process of Antonio's death. Say how I loved you. Speak me fair and death. Antonio, I am married to a wife which is as dear to me as life itself. But life itself, my wife, and all the world are not with me esteemed about thy life. I would lose all. I sacrifice them all. Here to this devil to deliver you. Your wife would give you little thanks for that if she were by to hear you make the offer. We trifle time. I pray thee, pursue sentence. A pound of that same merchant's flesh is thine. The court awards it, and the Lord doth give it. Most learned judge. And you must cut this flesh from off his breast. The law allows it, and the court awards it. Most rightful judge. A sentence. Come, prepare. Tell me a little. There is something else. This bond doth give thee here no jot of blood. The words expressly are a pound of flesh. Take then thy bond. Take thou thy pound of flesh. But in the cutting it, if thou dost shed one drop of Christian blood, thy lands and goods are, by the laws of Venice, confiscate unto the state of Venice. Oh, upright judge! Marked you! Oh, learned judge! Is that the law? Thou shalt shall see the act. For as thou urgest justice, be assured, thou shalt have justice, more than thou desirest. Oh, learned judge! Marked you! A learned judge! I take the offer then. Pay the bond thrice and let the Christian go. Here is the money. Soft. The Jew shall have all justice. Soft. No haste. He shall have nothing but the penalty. O oh, Jew, an upright judge, a learned judge. Shed thou no blood, nor cut thou less nor more, but just a pound of flesh. If the scale do turn, but in the estimation of a hair, thou diest, and all thy goods are confiscated. A second Daniel, a Daniel Jew? Now, April, I have you on the hip. Why doth the Jew force? Take thy forfeiture. Give me my principal and let me go. I have it ready for thee. Here it is. He hath refused in the open court. He shall have merely justice and his bond. A Daniel, still say I, a second Daniel. I thank thee, Jew, for teaching me that word. Shall I not have barely my principal? Thou shalt have nothing but the forfeiture to be so taken at thy peril, Jew. Why then the devil give him good of it? I'll stay no longer. Tarry, Jew. The law hath yet another hold on you. It is enacted in the laws of Venice, if it be proved against an alien, that by direct or indirect attempts he seek the life of any citizen, the party against which he doth contrive shall seize one half his goods. The other half comes to the privy coffer of the state, and the offender's life lies at the mercy of the Duke only. Down, therefore, and beg mercy of the Duke. Beg that thou mayst have leave to hang thyself. That thou shalt see the difference of our spirits. I pardon thee thy life before thou ask him. For half thy wealth, it is Antonio's. The other half comes to the general state which humbleness may drive unto a fine. 
Nay, take my life and all. Pardon not that. You take my house, then you do take the prop that doth sustain my house. You take my life, when you do take the means of whereby I live. What mercy can you render him, Antonio? A halter, Gracchus, nothing else, for God's sake. So please, my lord, the duke, and all the court, to quit the fine for one half of his goods. I'm content. Two things provided more, that for this favor, he presently become Christian. The other, that he do record a gift here at court of all he dies possessed unto his son Lorenzo and his daughter. He shall do this, or else I do recant the pardon that I may pronounce it here. Art thou contented, Jew? What does thou say? I'm content. Sir, draw thee the gift. I pray thee, bid me leave to go from hence. I'm not well. Send the deed after me and I shall sign it. Get thee gone, but do it. <laughs> 